Welcome back to the Applications of Stoichiometry. We're going to talk about titrations in this lecture. In your textbook, it's pages 312 to 315. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to identify the purpose of titration, and you will perform titration calculations to determine the precise concentration and pH of an acidic or basic solution. So what titration is, is it's a quantitative analysis. It lets us measure the concentration of a known substance in solution. So when we do titrations, we know a whole bunch of information. The only thing we're ever looking for is a concentration of um, a substance in the solution. Uh, their cl titrations are classified according to the reactions that occur uh, in the Erlenmeyer, Erlenmeyer flask. And when we look at a, a diagram, we'll see where that is. Um, there's a titrant solution added to a sample solution. And the types of titrations are acid-base titrations, redox titrations, and precipitate, titra precipitate titrations. And they're basically named on what, what's being reacted. These ones we aren't going to talk about in Chemistry 30 prep, and these ones we're not going to talk about in Chemistry 30 prep. So the only ones we have to worry about are the acid-base titrations. So the purpose of a titration is to find an accurate concentration, this is going to be done a couple of ways. Number one, titration, because it's so fast to do one experimental procedure, it can be done several times to improve our reliability or the accuracy of our analysis. Each trial should provide us with a result within 0.1 to 0.2 milliliters or one thousandth of a liter. So they're, they should be very, very close together. And again, these are very, very accurate. Uh, if there are trials that are done that have a result outside this margin, they won't be used in our chemical calculations. You'd still record it and say that it happened, but you wouldn't use it when you're doing any of your stoichiometry. And so here's the setup of a titration. Uh, there's a bunch of tools that are used. Uh, one is a burette. It's just a glass tube that's going to contain a substance that's going to be dripped down into a Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, the burette's held up by something called a burette clamp, aptly named, and a retort stand, which is basically just a stand that we can attach stuff to with clamps. Uh, the tap or the stopcock is the thing that on the burette that you can turn, and it's what opens or closes the burette. Now, titrations always have two substances. One substance is called a titrant. It's the thing that's in the burette. We are going to know what it is, so we're going to know its concentration. So its concentration is always known. It's known because we would have made this solution in the lab before we started. Its concentration is known, and its volume is going to be measured. So we're going to know its concentration. We're going to measure its volume as it goes through the burette. We're going to start at one level. We're going to use a bunch so the volume goes down and we're going to end somewhere else. The difference here will be the volume used for one experiment. And then we could go through and we could do it again. We'd start here, end up somewhere down here, and this would be the volume used for the second experiment. And so it's always red. So it's, it's going to be known and it's easy to find. In the Erlenmeyer flask, we contain something that I call the sample solution. So it's the sample that we want to find the concentration for. The concentration of this thing is always unknown. It's always what we're looking for. Its volume is always going to be known, and it's always going to be given in the question. When we put something in this Erlenmeyer flask, we're going to measure the volume first. So we're going to measure this amount of fluid first. So it's a measured volume. And so it's something we're always going to know. The only thing we're ever calculating in a titration is concentration. We're always looking for the concentration of our sample. So we're only going to be looking at acid-base titrations, which means there's only two possibilities. One possibility is there's going to be a base solution as our sample, and it's going to be titrated with a strong acid. The other possibility is that we have an acid solution, and we're going to titrate it with a strong base. And those are the only two types of titrations we're going to look at. 
And so it's really just pretty straightforward stoichiometry with a bit of setup. So here we have a 10 milliliter sodium hydroxide solution is titrated to completion with dilute hydrochloric acid according to the evidence and we should say above. That's what happens when you rearrange your slides. Calculate the pH of the sodium hydroxide solution. And so I'm just going to I'm just going to identify where things are. In our table here, we have 10 milliliter samples of sodium hydroxide. That means, and those are samples, so that means the stuff in here is sodium hydroxide, NaOH. That's what's in the flask. We don't know its concentration. In the burette is going to be our hydrochloric acid. It's our titrant and titrants titrate things. So the sodium hydroxide is titrated because something's being added to it. And so here we have a table and we have our trials. So there were four trials done. The final volume is what was read off of our burette. So if we look at the first trial, the initial volume was 0.6. And we should have some units here, milliliters, milliliters. And so the volume used is going to be milliliters. And so 0.6 would be somewhere up here. So the volume of solution of HCl started up here. So 0.6 milliliters was read off of our burette. The stopcock was opened, and we reacted it with the sodium hydroxide in the flask. And once all of the sodium hydroxide gets reacted, we stop. And then we go and measure about here. And so it would have stopped, say, about here. This spot reads 15.6. So what we have to find is the volume that was used. To find the volume, you take your 15.6, you subtract your 0 0.6, and that tells you how much titrant was used. And so that's what we're going to put in our table. So the volume used is 15 milliliters. And again, we're just going to go through and complete all of the subtractions. So the next one would be the 29.3 minus 15.6 at 13.7. Then we're going to do 43.0 minus 29.3 13.7. The final one would be 14.8 minus 1.2, and we get 13.6. So those are the four trials, and then we take a look at them, and we can only use values. within 0 0.2 milliliters. And when we take a look, these three are all within 0.1. This one here is 2 milliliters over, so we're not going to use it. It's too big. Too much was used. And usually what happens on the first trial is we're not quite sure what the concentration of our solution is, and we overshoot the mark a little bit. And so usually the first trial is a bust. It just kind of lets us estimate where we should be stopping. So these are the three volumes used. So step one is always find the average volume of titrant. And in this case, our titrant is the HCl. And so the average is going to be 13.7 plus 13.7 plus 13.6. And since there's three trials, we divide by three. And our answer is going to be 13.67 milliliters. And I always just use an extra sig dig. Uh, just so that we can be as accurate as possible. Our final answer is still only have three sig digs, but at least the volume we're using can have four. And now that we have that, we need a chemical reaction to figure out what happened. So 
On the next slide, we're going to write down our chemical reaction. I'm going to have to jump back and forth a little bit. So our chemical reaction was hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide. And so it's a neutralization reaction or an acid-base reaction, double replacement, however you want to say it. We're going to end up with sodium chloride, which is table salt, and it's soluble in water, so it's going to be aqueous, plus H2O. And the nice thing about this reaction is it's balanced. And now we're going to go through and fill in the things we know. Uh, the first thing I remember is that we figured out the volume of acid was 13.67 milliliters. And I'm just going to go back to my previous slide and get some more information. The volume of our sodium hydroxide was 10 mils, so we'll fill that in. A volume of 10.0 milliliters. And we have a concentration of hydrochloric acid. So we know the concentration of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.150 moles per liter. And the question is asking for pH. And we know that pH is related to the concentration of our base. And now we can go through and do some math. So we need to find the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. So we're going to find N, HCl. And I should, before I get too carried away, we've got to use our concentration formula. And we know we're going to have to use our pH formula. We know that pH is equal to the negative log, the concentration of hydronium ions, And we should also note that we're probably going to have to use POH because we're dealing with a base. So we'll write down at least the POH formula and see what we need to use from there. So our concentration of hydrochloric acid is going to be, or our number of moles, I apologize, concentration times volume. The concentration is 0 0.150 moles per liter times 0 0.01367 liters. So sorry, 0 0.01367 times 0.15 and we get 0 0.002, 0 .002 0 0.002, moles. We can now find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, which is our 0 0.00205 moles times 1 over 1. And we're going to get 0 0.00205 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now we have the number of moles, we're going to find the concentration. Concentration of NaOH is equal to N over V, which is going to be 0 0.00205 divided by 0 0.01 liters. And so our concentration is 0 0.205 moles per liter. So there's our concentration. We want to find its pH. And we know that sodium hydroxide, when you put it in water, it dissociates to form sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And so our pH is based on this thing. It's related to the concentration of hydroxide ions what we can find is actually pOH, and then we can convert it to pH. So we're going to go back up over here, and we're going to say, well, we can find the pOH, which is the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide ions. And luckily, the concentration of hydroxide ions is equal to the concentration of NaOH because our mole ratio is 1 to 1. So we can use our concentration directly. We can say this is the negative log 
of 0 0.205 moles per liter. So we're going to take the negative log. And so our pOH is equal to 0 0.6 Eight, eight. And now we can say, well, pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. So we have 14 minus 0 0.688. And so far, our final answer is going to be 13.3. This should make sense for a base. And we need two sig digs, I think. We'll go back and just make sure. Three sig digs. Now remember with pH, so we won't circle that one because that one's not the one we want. But with pH, only the digits after the decimal are considered significant. So it's going to be 13.312. 13.312. That's the pH of our basic solution, which should make sense. I mean, we are dealing with a base, a strong base. So it should have a very high pH. And that right there is probably the hardest our, our titration questions are going to get. Most of them are just going to take us down to the concentration level. Most of them will be able to stop right there. It just turns out that if we're doing a pH calculation, which we should be able to do because it's from our chapter 6, um, it might take a couple more steps, but usually we stop at the concentration. So another example, here we have titration of a nitric acid is titrated with potassium hydroxide. So here we have our nitric acid, NO3. HNO3 is in our flask. In our burette is potassium hydroxide, KOH. We want to find the concentration of the sample, which is what we always want to find. So the first step is we want to find our our volume of titrant used. So we're going to do our 13.3 minus 0.2, and so 13.1. And again, your table should always have units attached to it. And then 26.0 minus 13.3. We get 12.7, 38.8 minus 26, we're going to get 12.8, and then 13.4 minus 0.6, we get 12.8. So again, this one is not within. 0 0.2 milliliters, so we're not going to use it in our calculation. We're going to average. So we want the average titrant. It's going to be 12.7 plus 12.8 plus 12.8 all divided by 3. So we're going to get 12.77. That's the vol volume we're going to use for our titrant. And here we're using nitric acid and potassium hydroxide. So, again, we're just going to write down our formulas here. Potassium hydroxide plus nitric acid. Again, it's a nice single or double replacement. We're going to end up with uh, KNO3 plus H2O. And again, it's nice because it balances with a 1 to 1 ratio. And now we'll get our number. So we need 12.77 milliliters for our titrant, which in this case is the KOH. So volume is 12.77 milliliters. We have 10 milliliter samples of nitric acid, and we have a concentration of KOH. Oops, wrong button. Here we go. So 
our volume here is 10.0 milliliters and our concentration is 0. I think it's 964 moles per liter. I'll just go back and double check. 964 moles per liter. There we go. And so we're looking for the concentration of our acid. And now it's the, those three simple stoichiometric steps. We're going to find the number of moles of KOH. And again, we're just going to use our concentration formula. So N is equal to CV. 0 0.964 moles per liter times 0 0.01277 liters. So 0.964 times 0 0.01277. And we get 0. 0123 0123 moles. Now we can find the number of moles of HNO3, which is going to be our 0 0.0123 moles times 1 over 1. So 0 0.0123 moles of HNO3. And now we can find its concentration, N over V. So 0 0.0123 moles divided by 0 0.01 liters. And so we get 1.23 moles per liter. There we go. And most of our titration calculations are going to be that simple, that fast. The only real trick with titrations is making sure you know where your values go, so making sure you know which volume, and really it's just the volume, it's the which volume and which concentration go with which substance. So one more thing to talk about with uh, titrations in this lecture, uh, standardizing titrants. It turns out that the concentration of a strong acid or a strong base decreases over time. Uh, when it's being stored on the shelf, its concentration uh, decreases, it becomes more dilute. For acids, a lot of really strong acids are, are gases in the, their non-aqueous form. And as a result, every time you open up a container of concentrated hydrochloric acid, a little bit of the acid goes out of solution. So as, as you open it up, some of those hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride molecules are going to evaporate out of the uh, solution therefore lowering its concentration. For bases, the problem with strong bases is when you open up a can of strong base, of, of aqueous base, it reacts with the carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere to, for, to form some kind of carbonate ion. And so as this happens, these solid carbonates sink to the bottom of the solution and it reduces the concentration of hydroxide in the solution. So these strong acids and strong bases that we're going to use as titrants, their concentration is decreasing. So standardizing is a method of measuring the concentration of a titrant. It's always about measuring the concentration of a titrant. And it's always right before you do a titration. So you have a stock solution on the, on the shelf with a known concentration. The problem is its concentration is slightly decreasing every time it gets open and closed. So just before a titration, they're going to be reacted with, some, with a known standard, something of a known purity, to calibrate their concentration. So um, in terms of what you need to know. You need to know that acids and bases need to be standardized. And that's about it. Um, acids are standardized by reacting them with a base. And it's stored in t it's actually stored as tablets and then they dissolve them in water. And the nice thing about so our uh, sodium 
carbonate is it's easy to find and you can get it in a relatively pure state. So you can get it in a state that's really, really pure, dissolve it in water, react it with your titrant, and get your titrant's concentration. Then you can do your titration. Bases are, are um, standardized using something called potassium hydrogen uh, for thylate solution. And uh, yeah, you don't have to memorize it, but the idea of standardizing you should know. And that's it. So we have one more lecture to go where we're going to talk about indicators and uh, titration curves. So after the practice problems on page 315, uh, you can watch the last lecture.